Space. The final frontier. In the debut episode of Star Trek Strange New Worlds, Captain Pike warned Starfleet Command that they shouldn't want him back in command of the USS Enterprise. It's not a sentiment you hear too often on Star Trek, where the main characters are usually given to taking charge. But as this latest Trek series gets underway, Anson Mounds Pike just doesn't know if he has it in him anymore. Fortunately for us, his journey back to command in this first episode is a high-end and thrilling callback to the glory days of the Star Trek of yesteryear. When Adventure of the Week stories were the norm, aliens and their foibles were way more human-like than we cared to admit, and a little good humor went a long way to cushioning the frankly lofty ideals of the crew of the Enterprise. Fans of course know why Pike is down on his luck. Back on the original series, we learned that Pike was fated to be gravely injured in an accident at some future point. When the character returned in 2019 for Star Trek Discovery, Mount's incarnation of Pike got an unfortunate glimpse into his future. Which is why when we first meet him here, he's moping around in the mountains with his best pandemic look. Of course, it was that stint on Discovery that revitalized the Pike character for modern audiences, along with new versions of Spock and Number One, played by Ethan Peck and Rebecca Romaine. Fans love this trio, and now they've got a Star Trek show to call their own, depicting the early adventures of the USS Enterprise pre-Captain Kirk. The main thrust of the premiere involves the crew of the Enterprise called upon to look for one of their own after a mission goes awry on a planet not unlike Earth of the 21st century. Parallel Earths was a concept Trek creator Gene Roddenberry used in the original series, and this episode leans into that idea. The planet that Pike and company find, and the situation they find themselves in the middle of there, feels like classic Trek, with a good dose of cautionary storytelling thrown in along the way. Inevitably, some fans may bristle at Strange New World's brushes with continuity. For example, Spock's time on Vulcan with a certain character seemingly collides with the event of one of the most famous original series episodes. And yet, presumably, it can be weaved into the fabric of that earlier episode without actually breaking canon. Whether or not the tightrope act regarding this particular subplot is worth the effort remains to be seen. Speaking of which, stories like Spock's here, or Pike's struggles with the foreknowledge of his future, will seemingly continue throughout the show. Yes, Strange New Worlds is focusing on new stories each week, but also telling its character stories over a long haul. Mount and Peck certainly have some good stuff to chew on in this episode. The Enterprise could seemingly be powered by Mount's charisma alone, and Peck's unique take on Spock, who is 10 years out from being Spock, is addictive. But franchise newcomer Christina Chong's Leon Noonien Singh also gets to shine. Let's face it, the idea behind the character sounded pretty dumb when she was announced. A descendant of Khan, as in the Wrath of Khan, working on the Enterprise? But Chong is great here, hinting at her genetically tangled past and also showing the guys a thing or two when they're planet side. The rest of the cast are a mix of new and familiar faces, but even with the latter, these feel like fresh new spins on the likes of Uhura and Nurse Chapel. Star Trek Strange New Worlds premiere takes a classic approach to the franchise, not just in terms of its settings or characters, but also in its storytelling. With the terrific Anson Mount, Ethan Peck, and Rebecca Romaine leading a group of promising new Star Trek actors, Strange New Worlds is, so far, funny, inspiring, and kind of amazing. It's the best new Trek in years. For more on Star Trek, make sure to check out our chat with the cast of Strange New Worlds. And don't forget to like and subscribe to IGN wherever you like to watch.